So you're interested in N-gauge trains, or is that N-scale? You see, there's often confusion between the two. Basically, the term gauge describes the distance between the two rails on a train track, and scale refers to the distance in size when something is compared to a real life-sized object. Fortunately, N-gauge, which is 9 millimeters between the rails, works fine for N-scale. And that's where the letter N in the words N-gauge and N-scale come from. N for 9 millimeters. Here's the size of the N-scale in relation to a real life-sized object. As you can see, the size is fractionally different in the UK. A typical 40-foot real-sized boxcar when converted to N-scale is about 1 inch tall. It would be about 3 and a quarter inches long and about 3 quarters of an inch wide. An N-scale diesel engine is something about 4 inches long, whereas the same locomotive in HO scale would be about 8 inches long, which is double the length. A doorway in N scale is about half an inch tall, so any people you use need to be slightly shorter. Otherwise, they'll bump their heads on the door frames. An N scale automobile is just over one inch in length. Compare that to an HO vehicle, which is double the length at two inches. If you plan on making some N scale telegraph poles, they need to be about three inches tall, half the height of the same poles in HO scale. So as you can see, if you have limited space available, an N-scale layout is perfect. With N-scale, there's usually plenty of space to provide lots of amazing scenery. With the rolling stock being smaller, it's possible to have a lot of activity happening in a relatively small area. In N-scale, trains of around 100 cars are not uncommon. Now, I'm sure you'll agree, becoming a railroad baron is heady stuff, even if your entire railroad will fit on a tabletop. That's the big advantage of N scale. Being smaller, it will cost you less money to construct. And you'll have plenty of room to create some amazing scenery where the landscape dominates just as it does with a real life-sized railroad. And if you want to, you can construct your railroad in stages or modules. That's what I would certainly recommend. It is better to start off small rather than biting off more than you can chew. After all, there's no fun in having a partially completed railroad that gets abandoned and is left to gather dust. My current end scale layout is made up from modules that are each four foot long by two foot wide. The thing I like about building a modular system is you can clamp on more modules whenever you want to expand your layout. If you haven't already started constructing your layout, then my advice is to spend plenty of time planning what you're going to build. The most interesting layouts start with a core industry that the railroad serves. That's because every railroad needs a reason to exist. So including industries in your layout is often the best place to start. The best industries are usually the ones with the greatest variety in car loadings, not necessarily the ones that generate the most traffic. It's a case of focusing on the type of railroad features that you'll enjoy operating because this is your project. So don't plan your layout to please or impress anyone but yourself. What you include, or don't, is over to you. No one else. There's a lot more I can show you, so I've made some more videos. You're welcome to watch them, and also get the excellent Model Train Tips ebook absolutely free at the same time. Just click on the link to get access. As soon as you've done that, I'll talk to you again on the next video. See you again soon.